In the films, if an evil corporation or government wants to follow you, they slip a tracking device onto your car or your shoes or whatever. Of course, now we carry smartphones everywhere. A personal GPS beacon that makes it easier for people to know what you're up to, whether that's your mum, your partner or your boss. And recently we found out that Google and Apple don't just know where you are right now. They know where you've been over the past week, the past month, the past year, and how long you've been there. This could have a massive impact on your life. Imagine the information on your company phone in the hands of your employer. Suddenly, it's not so easy to have that off-site meeting, doctor's appointment, or long lunch. Let's start with the iPhone. This screen, available in the Settings app on your phone, shows where you've been in the past few days. Try it for yourself, but be warned, it's not for the faint-hearted. Many apps want your location too, and you can't necessarily trust what they say they're doing. For example, in April this year, Snapchat was told off by the US Federal Trade Commission. Why? Because it sucked up people's location data without their consent. And it's exactly the same on Google's phones. A free app called Brightest Flashlight on Android demanded access to your location. People assumed it was something to do with knowing if it was dark where you were. In fact, it was to serve location-based ads the FTC wrapped them for deceptive practices too. And apps don't just want your location. They want access to your contacts, your calendar, your microphone, the phone's camera, and even email, so that they can build their own social networks, sell you targeted ads, or simply sell that data to another company. And who knows where it will be used. So what can you do about it? Well, if you have an iPhone, Apple allows you to manage these things in your privacy settings. And with the iPhone, you can also refuse to give any specific app your location or access to your calendar or contacts and so on, which should help to keep apps you don't trust yet from peeking into your phone unnecessarily. But if you have one of Google's Android phones and want to switch off any of those settings, well, you can't. It's hardwired into the phone's operating system. So you either accept it or you find a new use for your phone. So there's a tension between these two companies. Google wants you to share your data because that helps it to serve ads and refine its content. Apple is generally aiming for the opposite, only collecting stuff that you choose to allow and anonymizing it in the process. But apps are hungry for more and more access to our phones, which means we need to continually make decisions on what data we want to share with them. All these settings, a constant stream of choices to be made about our personal privacy, Sometimes those evil corporations and their little trackers on cars seem a lot more manageable. The UK and US governments are both collecting massive amounts of information from the things we do on our phones and over the internet. 